Hello, sunshines. Hello, sunshines. Hello, sunshines. Welcome. Hello, sunshine. <laughs> I look like a crazy person. What is happening? I don't know how to make a video and a podcast at the same time. <sighs> Hello, sunshines. Welcome to What You're Reading, a bookish podcast where every other week I share what I've been reading, interview authors, and further my never ending quest to discover more queer own voices in the media. I'm Mallory, also known as Mallory of Sunshine, and join me today for a review of Grown Ups by Emma Jane Unsworth. Yeah, so hi. I'm recording a podcast, but I'm also recording a podcast. I'm recording it with audio. This is the first time I'm recording a video version of my podcast, What You're Reading. Most of you who know me or who have followed me for any number of years know that I have sort of always dived into things, dove into things. I have begun things by just starting. I don't often wait until I have the perfect setup or the most professional looking background, etc. And so that's where we are today. We're sitting in my living room in front of my bookcase. I did do my hair and I did put on my eyebrows and, you know, I'm wearing clothes from top to bottom actually. It's not just the YouTuber trick where I'm not wearing pants, but... I don't have a great camera setup and my mic setup is super awkward and my laptop is on my ground, on my ground, (laughs) on the ground as I record this and I have, I don't know, a not ideal lighting situation right now, but I just, I didn't want to not do this, you know, I, I wanted to record this next episode as a video podcast episode and so I'm starting, I... I'm filming on my little point and shoot because I forgot my tripod um, mount piece in a box somewhere and I can't find it. So I have the tripod, but not the piece that connects to the camera to the tripod. So I'm filming on a box. I'll show you a picture of this on my Instagram story. So if you follow me there, you'll get to see a little behind the scenes of what this setup looks like. It's not glamorous, but that actually doesn't matter because it's getting the job done. I'm recording my podcast right now and that's what matters to me. (laughs) So I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to be recording today. I'm really excited to be recording this particular episode because I just finished this book and I have a lot of thoughts about it and I can't wait to talk about them with you. So I have some notes on my phone. This is going to be a thing you'll see if you, you know, tune into the video version of this podcast. I am going to edit it a tiny bit. I'm not just going to do this free form because it's just like I do my videos. Sometimes I just need to cut some stuff out if I ramble or if I don't exactly know where a thought is going. <laughs> so bear with me there. But I hope that this is exciting for some of you. I did a poll on my Instagram asking how people like to, you know, kind of listen, consume, etc. their podcast. And it was actually, I was surprised by the results. It was about by the end of it. At first, it was really close. It was like 50% video 40% audio and then it was by the end of it about uh about 60% 70% audio 30 or 40% video so I still thought that ratio was pretty high which told me that some of you like to listen to your podcasts as videos and watch them instead. So I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how this is going to look. I don't know how I'm going to like it. And I know that I'm going to want to change things immediately. But as with most things, I would much rather just start and iterate than not start and try to get it perfect the first time. Because, well, if it's anything I've learned in my 30 years on this planet, perfection does not exist. (laughs) So that, yeah, that was a really long and rambly intro to say that here we are. I think my audio is peaking a little bit. Is that any better? Mm, Not so much, but that's okay. Ah, shoot. I don't know. This is weird. Okay. Well, there. I just 
don't want my audio to clip is the thing. It sounded good when I was doing it, so I'm just going to let it go and hope for the best. Okay, so Grown Ups by Emma Jane Unsworth. That's what we're here to talk about. I was actually gifted this book by Libro FM's Influencer Arc program, which is super cool. I'm a part of their program. I think I talked about that in my last episode. If I didn't, I talked about it on my Instagram channel, on my Instagram page for what you read in. I'm super excited to have been included in Libro FM's program. I've talked about it a little bit here on this channel before, but I'm going to give you the quick 20 second elevator spiel about it. Basically, Libro FM is an audiobook provider similar almost exactly like audible you get credits every month that you can redeem for audiobooks but the difference with libro fm and the reason that i love it so much is that you can actually choose an independent bookstore in your area to support with a portion of the money that you purchasing that audiobook generates so basically you're Buying an audiobook or a credit, in this case where you subscribe for a credit every month, there are a couple credits every month, and then a portion of that money goes to support a local bookstore that you love, hopefully. (laughs) So I think that's really cool because small bookstores need all the support they can get in general, much less now during COVID. So I'm super passionate about Libra FM because the way I see it, if I'm going to be listening to an audiobook anyway, I would much rather support a small independent bookstore and a company like Libro FM who's also going to support that small independent bookstore than a giant corporation like Audible. So that's just where I land on the topic. And if you are also interested in checking out Libra FM, there is a link in the description of this video, but also of the podcast where you can get a free audiobook when you sign up using my link. So I just thought I would throw that out there. Super cool. I'm super passionate about Libro FM. <laughs> And that's where I got this book. This book was gifted to me, but this video and this podcast are not sponsored by Libro FM. They're not paying me to say this. They're not paying me to say things about them. I think if you use the referral link, I probably do get a small kickback eventually, but nobody's used it yet. So we're not at that point yet. (laughs) Uh, But I do just want to put that disclaimer out there so that it's out there. Okay, so Grown Ups by Emma Jane Unsworth. I think this is the third time I am trying to start the starting of this review. <laughs> this book was, um, this book just came out at the end of August, I believe, maybe the 31st of August or something like that. It is one of Bustle's most anticipated reads for 2020. And we all know that Bustle usually generally knows what's up. The book is narrated by Chloe Massey and she does a phenomenal job. I love her voice. I love her voice as Jenny, the heroine of this story. And it is called Grown Ups here in the US, but everywhere else I think it's called Adults. It sounds like from what I understand that Grown Ups was Unsworth's intended title for the book so that also is pretty cool so the book blurb says that this is an original novel about a woman going through a breakup but really having more of a breakdown so like i mentioned in my to be read for august podcast i think i think i said this that that's part of what drew me to this book because it just kind of seemed like something i should read it seemed timely (laughs) for my life without going into too many details. This book is told through Livewire pros, text messages, email chains, social media posts, and even script dialogue in some cases, which is really interesting and actually is one of the reasons I wish that I had a physical copy of this book. So I'm probably going to end up buying a physical copy of this book. I did the same thing with Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I loved the narrator. I loved hearing it narrated to me through the audiobook, but I wanted to see the email chains and like letters play out on the page as well. And and so I do kind of want to see how the author intended the physical copy of this book to be read as well. So Jenny McLean is a 35-year-old woman and online columnist for a magazine called The Floof, and she is completely obsessed with social media. Her life is spinning out of control, and that's what this whole book is about. Basically, 
Her friends are no longer her friends. Her ex breaks up with her. Her body betrays her. She loses her job. And she kind of is just spiraling. And this book is the journey of her spiral. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and her mother is about to move back in with her, which she has a pretty complicated relationship with her mother for many reasons, so that is a whole nother layer of drama in her life. Basically, Jenny is in her late 30s, and being an adult is nothing like what she expected, and to be quite honest, this book was nothing like I expected. I had an idea of what it was going to be, obviously, going into it, having read the book blurb, having, you know, I didn't read any reviews or anything, but just having a general sense about it, it seemed, I wouldn't say lighthearted and fun, Maybe I would use fun as a descriptor of what I thought it was going to be. And it was fun, but it wasn't lighthearted. And I think that took me by surprise. Because, and I'm not saying that like books or media or content about social media is always just fun and lighthearted and, you know, I don't know, easy to consume. But this book took me on a journey that I didn't anticipate going on. I think is probably the best way for me to put it into words. And from the and from this point on, there's probably going to be a few spoilers. So if you don't want to have this book spoiled for you, I would say stop listening. I'll put a time code down below so you can skip to the part where I kind of do a brief summary of the book. But if you don't want to have things spoiled for you, skip this part. So when we first meet Jenny, she is kind of having an existential crisis over a croissant. She's in a cafe And she's having this internal monologue with herself about which croissant she's going to end up with because there's a few, there's a day old croissant all the way at the front and then there are fresh new fluffy croissants towards the back of the case. And she's just kind of talking to herself about how she knows that the person who's going to ring her up and hand her the croissant is most likely going to hand her that older croissant it's obvious that it's older and so when she gets to the front she asks if she can have one of the croissants from the back and the person says they're all the same and 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 meanwhile also too while she is waiting in queue she is thinking about how she's going to caption this picture that she's going to post of this croissant on her social media and so sure enough she gets up to the front and the person goes to reach for the day old croissant and she asks for one at the back and it kind of becomes this whole scene and then she ends up posting a picture of it and it's just dumb and stupid and she just feels like not connected to the post which I mean it's a post about a croissant but It was just meaningless before and now it's exceptionally meaningless to her. And that's kind of the first glimpse we get into Jenny's kind of neurotic tendencies when it comes to perfectionism and her social media presence and all of those things. I think she even texts a friend to ask her if she can help her come up with the caption, which, yeah. It's kind of a lot for a picture of a croissant. I think what struck me the most about this book is not only how Unsworth kind of unpacks and grapples with the notion of being a human on social media, but also pretty heavily a woman on social media. And even bigger than that, a woman in the world of the 21st century. And she kind of weaves these thoughts in and out of every corner of the book which is part of what drew me in to the book I think. For Jenny social media becomes an escape. She uses it to avoid issues in her own life, people in her own life. She obsesses over people she follows that she thinks have this perfect life. Uh, The main example of this is someone called Susie Brambles in the book. And I think a lot of people do that. I think that's really relatable. I think that, I I mean, I'm guilty of that, right? Following people who I want to emulate or I admire something about them or I aspire to be or have something that they are or have, you know? And so I think that's really relatable. And even just that made me think, 
I need to go through my follows again and just clean that up a bit. Jenny is kind of annoying at times. She's flawed, but she's trying to be better. And that was completely evident to me. Like the arc of Jenny's character development is that she is kind of annoying, a little bit self-centered, a little bit self-righteous. And she eventually learns that she just has to grow up and become who she is and own that and be better honestly she's probably a Virgo she speaks her mind she speaks her mind very directly and she learns and she grows and to me that was a beautiful thing because that's what life is right it's learning and it's growing this book took me by surprise again and again. It had me laughing at times and nodding and letting out breaths I didn't know I was holding. And it sent me into deep emotional self-reflection spirals too, which I was super not expecting when I started this book. I picked it up as kind of a casual read and it took me much farther than that. Okay, so my camera is dying, so I need to record this part pretty quickly now. <laughs> which is unfortunate, but I also just want to put a trigger warning in here for those of you who might have trauma around miscarriages or wanting to conceive or being unable to conceive or quite honestly just any of the super complicated nuanced thoughts that a lot of women have around motherhood in general that there is some trauma that comes up with that in the book both losing a pregnancy and also just kind of motherhood trauma in general so I would say that that's a trigger warning I want to put out there like I said before there were moments that I wished I had a physical copy of this book because I wanted to underline or highlight things or remember pieces which I haven't yet found a really good system for doing that with audiobooks yet, but a couple lines that really stood out to me that I wanted to share because they're kind of just witty and poignant and they stuck with me were one, I don't believe in any space you can hurl things into without consequences. Early on, that's one of Jenny's life philosophies. And another is every act of communication is an act of translation, which is just completely true. So there are little gems like that throughout the book. And honestly, this was the first book I've read by Emma Jane Unsworth. And now I really want to read more. So I'm going to have to do that. And I guess just to wrap things up, since my camera is dying, I'm a little out of practice reviewing books, but I hope this was helpful or enjoyable to you. If you're curious about reading Grown Ups by Emma Jane Unsworth, if you're in social media at all, if you have any curiosities or leanings towards social media, I would say definitely check it out. It's worth a read. It's pretty short. It's about eight hours long. So I guess it's like a medium read, <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed it. And I, it's a book that's going to stick with me for a little while. And I'm probably going to get the physical copy so I can read that too. Okay. Well, like I said, my camera is dying, so I'm going to do a quick sign off, but thank you so much for watching and listening. If you are watching and listening, Feel free to follow me on Instagram. You can follow my personal account at Mallory and you can also follow the podcast account at What You're Reading. I post there pretty regularly and I'm trying to update stories more often. So thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this podcast, it would really help me out if you would leave a review on Apple Podcasts, just letting me and all the other listeners know what you thought. All right, everyone. Well, it's been super great talking to you and thank you again so much for listening. I'll catch you next time. Bye.